Welcome to Straight Talk with Carly Lissa Thorne. Today I have with me Erica Tucci. And we're going to be talking about her book, Radiant Survivor. So welcome, Erica. Thanks, Kara Carly, for inviting me today. Very welcome. First thing I'd love to find out is there's several things I always ask her to standard. And one is, what was your inspiration behind writing the book? Well, huh. I had a stroke in June 2011, which kind of dropped me to my knees because I had a very, very fulfilling life. I was a corporate manager at a Fortune 500 company, and I had a fledgling healing arts business. Um, I'm the Reiki master, massage light, massage um, therapist, an author, a life coach. I was doing like I was working about 80 hours a week, and then I had a wonderful stroke that wonderful day that just I mean it just turned my world upside down. So. Um, about two years later, when I had more strength, I decided to write another book, and I, that's what I—that's why I wrote *Radiant Survivor*. And it was about my, my, you know, my experience. But the book itself is not just about my story; it's also about anybody that has some kind of life-altering experience, such as cancer, or abuse, or addiction, or MS, or anxieties, or whatever. Um, I have. 14 stories in, in addition to my own of people that have had those kinds of challenges and um, each chapter that I did I, I included uh, their story in the chapters I also have a chapter on caregivers because you can't forget the caregivers because they're just as important as the person that's surviving the, um, the incident so the other thing I love to ask and then I'm just going to go back to your book because sure. um, that was a very pithy little illustration there you did of what it what was included in the book but the other thing I love to ask because there's always a story behind this as well is the title of the book what was your inspiration behind that specific title well um, for one thing because I consider myself a survivor not a victim and my tagline I guess you could say um, of what I was doing before was Radiance Muse and the first program that I developed before I had my stroke was for women and it was called Yin Radiance so I figured that if I'm going to be using Radiance in my tagline, I should use it in my book, Radiant Survivor. That's really beautiful. I actually really love that. Now, one of the things I do want to touch upon right away, because you brought up something a lot of people do not, and I myself has, have worked for hospice and eons ago, um, did work with people in stroke, that had strokes and, uh, and group homes and mm -hmm. Down syndrome and autism and all that. I mean, people that are paraplegics and, and, and actually rehab houses coming right out of a stroke was the caregivers. So many people do not talk about, like you said, the caregivers. Did they, it is such an important piece and they get mm -hmm. so overlooked. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about that chapter and then I'd love to go into the rest as well. Well, one of them, uh, it's again, it's a, a multitude of stories from people that were caregivers. And of, my, of course, the first one that I have in there is my mother's story because she's been my caregiver ever since I had my stroke. In fact, I live with her now because of that. Um, but, you know, each caregiver had the same kind of story about what it was like to be caring for somebody with some kind of affliction that was very serious. And, you know, they, they talked about the ups and downs about being the caregiver, what, they have to, what they've had to deal with in their own lives and everything, how it's affected their lives. So they were, I think that the chapter itself was, I think, a good um, in, in addition to the book for people that were, you know, giving care to the people that had had um, had whatever the uh, challenge was. It's a very rewarding and stressful position to be in. Obviously yes. the rewarding part is if you have a big heart and you love to give and you like to help, that's a very huge component. A lot of people don't realize that it's also very hard and there's a lot of stress involved as well. So I'm really I'm grateful that you actually wrote a chapter about the caregivers because they really are overlooked a lot. The other thing I'd love to touch upon is you know, you're a healer. I'm also a Reiki master instructor, and I know you said you're a Reiki master and you massage work and life coach as well as I. One of the things that a lot of people do not like to talk about is, or will ask you, is how could someone who lives a holistic life, right, who has, you know, the ideals of, you know, being healthy and mm -hmm. living healthy get ill, get a oh, stroke? Yeah. Or that. Yes. And so uh -huh. that's another thing I'd love to talk about is because just because someone may be vegan, or vegetarian or whatever their lifestyle is does not precursor or precursor them for one or the other in my my personal opinion it, life is so I'd love for you to talk about that from from your perspective and I'm sure in your mind I'm sure you had some of those like why me's or 
I live this type of life, you know, et cetera. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yes, I mean, obviously, when you first have something like that happen, you think, why me? Why did this happen? But see, I look at my stroke as a karmic thing. And if you read the story in my book about what, what is behind my stroke, it's not just a physical thing. Yes, I had a hole in my heart, but it was karmic, and I'll tell you why. Um, two years before I had my stroke, I had a past life regression. And what happened is I saw myself, and I was a ballet dancer in this lifetime. I saw myself on stage as a showgirl dancer, and she had a gaping symbolic hole where her heart was. And of course, I didn't think of it then because that was two years before my stroke. I didn't think of what it would, you know, make what it would turn out to be. But um, what happened was that um, this showgirl had lost the love of her life in that that um, past life progression. And um, in this lifetime, the man that she lost her love in that lifetime is also in my life this time. And I was kind of I've, I want to say that I've lost his love again in this life because he was married when I met him. But he's, he's since been divorced, and I'm hoping that, that we're going to reconnect after I get fully healed. But so, you know, my thing was karmic. There was a very, very big spiritual component to it. And really, I really feel, my belief is that anything has got karma in it, that there was something that I had to learn in this life. And it also brings up the, the, uh, another part of my stroke. <coughs> um, there's a, you know that we both, we every, everybody, both male and female, we have masculine and feminine t um, energies. Okay, um, I have always lived my life out of my masculine side. Before I had my stroke, obviously, I was working 80 hours a week. I was very driven, very controlling, very ego-based. I was ready to just, you know, I was ready to take on the world. My, the side that got stroked was my masculine side, was my right side. So it made perfect sense that my that side would get stroked because it was my it was spirit's way of saying Erica, you've got to find some kind of inner balance between the masculine and the feminine energies within you. And I my my femininity had been su suppressed so much because I was so masculine. It's kind of like the way the world is right now, right? <laughs> but that that thing the, having the stroke on my mass on my right side is allowing me to develop my femininity so that I can find that inner balance so that I can be a holistic, a really a holistic person, a whole person, because I'll have both energies working properly. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. It's very interesting in this culture. Men are afraid to show their feminine side or to even have someone say, oh, my God, you have beautiful female energy. And females, because of women's liberation and, and you know, trying to be a mom, work, marriage, all those things, have been living more out of their masculine side. And it really does throw you out of whack. And having that beautiful balance of male and female, yin and yang, right, is, is a beautiful thing. Um, I, too, tend to, it's, I, I love our similarities, tend to, tend to have lived more out of my masculine side and, um, and through my own journeys as well. I'm learning to appreciate and show more of my feminine side. But it is, it's an absolute journey. And the universe, in my personal opinion, will always give us roadblocks, if you will, or lessons to mm -hmm. learn the things we need to learn. Yes. And I think the whole karmic conversation is how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Because there's some people believe that there's fate. Some people believe there's destiny. Some people believe there is karma. So whatever someone's ideology is or belief is, um, you know, they're going to believe whatever they want to believe. That's right. too nice something happens. Right. It's funny that you bring up the rabbit hole because I was taking a shamanic journeying class about a month, or, a month or so ago, and when I was doing a journey, trying to do a journey, I went down the rabbit hole, <laughs> and I met the White Rabbit, the Queen of Hearts, and the Cheshire Cat of Alice in Wonderland in my journey. It was hilarious. So I've been, I, you know, I haven't done much with it, but I did buy, because I'm also doing tarot now, as a, you know, I do tarot, and I just bought the Alice in Wonderland tarot cards. But that's funny that you brought the rabbit hole up. Just that would be very interesting for you to play with the Alice in Wonderland Tarot and see mm -hmm. why that resonates for you and why that came up for you in your journey. Uh, yes, I will. I'm very fascinating. Yeah, and I, I love the universe, how it talks to you. It can be in numbers. It can be in whispers. It can be in people. You know, There's just so many. I personally, uh, numbers really connect with me. I love the angel number book by Doreen Virtue. Mm -hmm. I'll always see 444 or 323. You know, I, yeah. I see very steadily repeatedly numbers I'll wake up at a very specific time 
So mm. I think the universe, depending on what we resonate with, what That's modality right. we may resonate with more, tends to reach out to us through that way. Yes. I um, think tarot is mine. In fact, my stroke actually led me to tarot. Now, when, again, when I was um, before I had my stroke, I tried to dabble in tarot, but I couldn't interpret the cards because my 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 analytical mind was getting in the way. Well, then when I had my stroke, and it's just been about a year, but I had I started getting into tarot again. So I thought I'm going to try it again, and it's it's fascinating how all of a sudden it opened up so much. Um, my total my feminine intuition started started working it started you know started being allowing me to read the cards and even though I'm new to tarot I have a very very um, very wonderful friend she's a psychic and she does a lot of tarot readings she's done I've done readings for her and she says Erica you're I can't believe the gift that you have even even with only you know doing it for just a short period of time and I said well you know it's you know I don't think that this gift is just from this lifetime you know a lot of times our gifts are not just from one lifetime that they had. They, if, if you believe in past lives and stuff, I think they extend very, very far back into your other past lives. Well, the, the, the analogy I usually give people when it comes to that is the, the past life or, or the present life is sometimes we know something, we have no idea why we know it. To right. me, that's knowledge that, you know, if I didn't learn it from a book or et cetera, and I'll just automatically come out with stuff and then people are like, how do you know this? And I'm like, I don't know. I just know it. Right. Mm -hmm. So to me, I, for people that don't want to get into the whole karma or deja vu or whatever you want to call it, where you, you're experiencing something and you could swear you've been there or you meet someone and it's like, Oh my God, I've known you forever. And you right, just, right. so, I mean, I think these little idiosyncrasies or uh, coincidences that some people would like to call them, I think it all ties in. I personally do believe in reincarnation and do believe in, in the various the various theories out there. Um, and I think it's a really beautiful thing. I'd love for you to touch upon from your book as well is we talk about the, the different energies of being a survivor or a victim. How have you literally gone from one to the other? Because obviously when we first start, I don't care who we are, we can be as good as we want to be. We have a little bit of victim energy because we're like, oh my God, what happened? So how did you transcend the victim energy to you know, now radiant survivor? Well, I want to step back to my birth first. Um, when I was born, actually my mother and I almost died in birth because of she had a quack for a doctor. So I consider, and I feel like I, I, can, I, I was born with a shield and a sword in my hand. So I always have felt that I was a survivor in life and nothing was going to stop me. But now, when I did, when I did have my stroke, like I said, you know, everybody asks why, why you don't, I don't understand why this happened to me. But again, it's it was my attitude towards what my stroke was all about. What was it that that? Why did I have a stroke? Why? It's not about, you know, why poor me, poor me. You know, it's more like what is it that I'm learning from the stroke? You know, what is it going? Why? What lessons am I going to learn in the stroke to help? propel me down my spiritual path because I, I, I've always been quite um, spiritually oriented and and so I, I kind of, that's why I felt that this was really just a karmic thing for me that it was something else in my life to help me um, become more who I really am getting down to my authentic self so I don't feel as myself as a victim at all I don't think I, you know I'm not a victim good for you so I would love to talk about Maybe possibly some tools because I know I deal a lot of people with that are survivors of whatever sexual, verbal, physical, and all sorts of issues, right? And even medical issues. I'd love for us to give them some tools on coming away from the space of being a victim and how how do they how do they attain or how they grab on to the energy and the feelings of survivor energy. Well. Some of the topics that I cover in my book are such, you know, these kind of tools. Um, I really believe that you've really got to believe in yourself. You know, you've got to really dig deep to who you really are and know that, that your situation is not your, it's not who you are. That's just a circumstance that happened to you and it happened for a reason. And if you, so if you believe in yourself and believe in the circumstances and what they really mean, then you can kind of work through that, you know, that victim mentality. Also, I don't think that you should ever give up because because you, you have to look at the um, the situation as a way of growing. 
and don't give you don't want to give up because you never know what's going to uh, you never know what's how you're going to end up um, in this situation I really feel that I'm going to be fully recovered and when I am fully recovered I'm going to be better than I was before there are such their gifts I consider having a something a challenge like this to really be a gift in my life because of what it's helped me to learn about what's important in life it's about you know the relationships it's not about your material possessions It's not about the things that you the accoutrements that you've accumulated over life to, <clears throat> to me having something like this happen to me it's taught me that my relationships with people are so much more important and my relationship with spirit are so much more important than the outside things that I've had before I think that it's helped me also um, live in the present moment you know trying to understand because we you know you never know what's going to happen to you from one minute to the next I never thought I was going to have a stroke but if, I think that if we really learn to live in the present moment then we can actually cherish every moment of the day and no matter what happens to us we can we can enjoy everything in our lives now it's not to say that we don't have the emotional breakdowns because I have plenty of emotional breakdowns I mean even just the other day I felt like why am I even here what's my purpose in life why do I even want to live anymore but you, you get over those humps if you allow yourself to go through those emotions and that's that's very key I think if you allow yourself to go through any emotions that you have when you have some kind of a challenge that you're faced with then and but not get stuck in them then a lot of times that'll help release any kind of negativity that you have inside of you and then you can go on and move forward to the next step it's a process of re recovery you know from any kind of challenge it's a big process and if you can just take it step by step and I think that you also should um, have a, establish a support system I have my mother my mother and I have a wonderful relationship wonderful relationship and since I live with her you know it's it's really nice to just know that I can turn to her anytime I want but I really think also it's re very important that you establish some kind of a relationship whether it's a support group or whether it's just one person or you know multiple people it helps very much to have that when you get down or anything to talk through whatever it is that you want to talk through a lot of people unfortunately are afraid to ask for help they're either embarrassed or they feel guilty and you're right the support system is vital because you need to have someone to talk to and and obviously there's that balance too. You don't want to talk to someone and, and constantly be negative and, and the woe is me energy either because you know that's really hard for someone to be around all the time. Yes. And however, that support system, that's another great thing about having a, a larger support system because you don't have to solely depend on one person. If you are grateful enough to have a, a nice circle of people that yes. are, are there for you, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that you, you, you mentioned, which is very vital and key, is that we have to honor and feel what we're feeling. If we don't, it just gets stuffed, suppressed, and it never comes out, and it's still there. So like you said, the sooner we honor what we're feeling or face what we're feeling and process it, then we can actually go on to the next step. And that never ever give up is part of that, because there are times that you are, I mean, I don't care how perfect somebody is, how healthy they eat, how much they exercise, all these things, everybody has their meltdowns. I think the only difference I've seen with people that are, have done a lot more self-work is they're just more aware of their yes. meltdowns. It doesn't mean that they don't have their meltdowns. It just means that, oh my God, I'm doing this behavior. They catch themselves in the behavior and then they take the action steps to correct the behavior. Yes. That to me I, is the biggest difference I see from someone who hasn't chosen to face things or, or do a lot of self-work or et cetera. Yes. Um, so it's that we don't have meltdowns and it's not that we're perfect. It's not that we're better than other, anybody else. We're it just still means human. That we're more aware. Yes, yes, I, I fully agree. We're still human. Yeah, we're still human, you know. Um, so, I mean. We still, you know, something like you had the stroke, things happen. I just think. Um, it's how we react to whatever happens to us. That's the, that, that's the key. How am I going to react to this kind of situation? And um, there was one, one of the stories in my book is a woman that had a stroke at 26, I think. Um, and she was 46 when I interviewed her for the book and um, she was and, she, and we did a Skype you know a Skype call and she showed me she's still paralyzed on her her um, bad side and her arm is still you know very just flaccid and she kind of lifted her arm up and showed me what she was like and you know but she's she is what she's done she swam with the dolphins she's established she's started her own organization she lives in the UK and she was actually um, 
crown, crown something. Uh, she had she met with the queen. I can't remember exactly, but something with royalty. I mean, she's done a lot of things. So she's taken her her condition and she's made something wonderful and positive out of it. She's helping a lot of people with disabilities. She and and when you help other people, I feel that that helps you heal too. I think we always learn from each other. I don't care who it is. It could be like a well put together client that is, you know, doing wonderful and I'll still learn something from them. And it could be someone that's, you know, going through really tough issues and, you know, I've been through my own share of issues and we may be, you know, sharing about that and I still learn something. And here's one other huge thing that I think is nugget, if you will, I think is so important. We, most, a lot of people have been through whether it be physical abuse or sexual abuse or verbal abuse and there's more guilt you know, tied to it. They're afraid to share what they've been through. And I think there's a difference between repeating your story from a victim energy or sharing your story from an empowerment place and going, yes, this happened to me. However, like you said, it doesn't define who I am. My experience isn't me. My stroke isn't me. However, look at all the things I've done to not be in that. I'm using I'm using my skill sets and things I've learned in this place, and I'm helping other people. Yes. And I think many times we sweep stuff under the carpet because of shame or guilt, and I, I think we're doing a disservice to one another because our stories, our experiences, our journeys are ways for us all to learn from one another. Yes, I agree completely. Yes, I, I completely. In fact, um, Everybody does have a story, and it doesn't have to be a you know something that's the de so devastating. It could be anything that's slight, you know. But still, that's their story. We all have our own stories, and I think that in order for us, and I think that as we share with everybody else, I think that that helps uh, the communion of, among everybody. You know, that we we are all we are all connected, and we are all alike in many ways. We've all got our stories, and we should be able to be willing to share what's happened to us. Because there are people that are want to, going to want to hear that story, and that, because there are people that want to be healed themselves, and if the person has a story to give to them, that that will help them. Well, then that's that's wonderful, you know, when people are helping other people. I agree. The other thing, I since since I am interviewing you, I'd love <laughs> for you just to um, a so because this is a podcast and a video for you to actually say where people can reach you and you know, spell out your website and then you know list the other books that you have and just give it like maybe a one or two uh, line sentence of what each book's about. Okay. Well, you've got I've got two websites, ericatucci.com, e r i c a t u c c i my name dot com, radiantsurvivor.com. That one's just my book. My my ericatucci.com is about everything that I do. My tarot, my my life coaching, and it's got my, you know, it's just got, and my books and everything. Now, I've got three books that I actually market, and Radiant Survivor is one of them. Anything is Possible is a, um, uh, my novel that was about, it's about the love story about, about with the man that I told you about in my past life, but it was the love story that we had in this lifetime. So it, it, it ties in with my Radiant Survivor book. And then I have another one called Zesty Woman, Womanhood at 40 and beyond and that book is about obviously whatever you know what the, the um, title says it's for women over 40 about how your life changes in that time and how wonderful it can be now the um, zesty womanhood is also the basis of a, a program um, that I developed that I mentioned before at the very beginning um, for women called yin radiance the journey to inner balance in fact I did all that work before I had the stroke and, and now I'm actually living it so I have that program also. Um, so, but you can see all these things on my website, ericatucci.com. And Wonderful. you can touch with me through there, too. Wonderful. I really, I really appreciate you coming on. I really value your insight. I'm really excited for people to hear this and learn some tidbits on, on different ways to empower themselves. And I look forward to people reading your books and learning from you. So well, thank, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really feel honored. It was delightful. Wonderful. Well, everybody, I will putting together a whole blog post to help all of Erica's information. It'll be we also will have the podcast and the video, and it'll have all her links so you can find her. And I look forward to being with you next time. Have a great day, everyone.